I'm beyond touching grass. I'm touching sulfur. Hello, exalots. Good morning, noon, or night. For legal reasons, I don't know where you live. So that's me in Taiwan once again. Behind me, there is a volcano. You might be wondering, why? Well, you know how people keep leftovers in the fridge and then just pile them all up together to make one last meal? Well, that's gonna be this video. This is a fast compilation of the rest of my journey in Taiwan. So right after the adventure in the cat village where I'm still dressed like Ken, we went to repeat an activity I did when I was 13 years old at the exact same place. So basically, there's this place where you can write your wishes onto lanterns with ink and let it fly up to the sky. And when I was here in 2017, there were two wishes I made that stood out. One was that I wanted to study psychology. And two, that I wanted to be a YouTuber. Well, guess who did doing both? Yeah, I probably should have written be good at English on there somewhere too. That's right, yeah boys, taking psychology as a degree, the future of Malaysia has never looked so great. And I'm doing you, doing YouTube. <laughs> So I guess you can say, my wishes did come true. This time though, I made sure to wish for really important stuff, like money. Literally on every side of the lantern where the colors are dedicated for a different area of life, I just, I just put money on all of them somehow. For one side though, I made sure to wish all you exalots a bright and happy future. Subscribe and interact three times to claim. My mom asked me to wish for my brother to get a nice girlfriend. And I think it's kind of sad when your own mother thinks you have to rely on a sky god to get bitches. We will not discuss how 13 year old me looked like a portobello mushroom. It was a dark time. Some other wishes I made was for my dad to retire early and for my mom to have an increase in her salary often. Damn, we are never beating these Chinese stereotype allegations. Then we got onto the railroad to send off the lantern, which was very adrenaline inducing because we had to speed run it before the train arrived. Otherwise, the lantern won't be the only thing flying up to the sky, if you know what I mean. Now, the person who was in charge of us had very specific poses she asked us to do, such as like hard hands or like fist bumping the sky. And I just like to show how my grandpa did them, okay? He was so lost in these instructions. This was when we were told to fist bump. You got me, my dad, my mom, my grandma, and then <laughs> when she told him to do like this Korean hard hand thing, he audibly said huh? and asked if it was a gun. This was how it ended up looking. Finally, we let go of the lantern and it went off into the sky fulfilling our wishes and never to be seen again until it inevitably falls down onto an unsuspecting squirrel. After that, we were all feeling a bit peckish, so we went to this noodle spot for lunch. And I could go on about how bizarre this place was. There was a spot for people to jump rope with noodles and the giant noodle hammock. But I'm gonna use this opportunity to show you guys an accurate representation of my height. Some of you in my last video were saying I looked a tad bit short. Well, this is a me six foot five standing next to an average sized scooter. I bet you feel real dumb right now. Then we went into this little town kinda market sell place. Good English. Look at this smooth transition thanks to this dog's butt. There were a lot of these pinball games in the area. As well as parrots who seemed to dislike me a whole lot. I am the enemy of both people and birds I suppose. Because the next parrot we saw sounded like it was trying to place 10 curses on me. I am money. My mom was gonna film me eating ice cream as we continued walking but got distracted by this dog that looked like four different dogs stitched together. Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> then we came to this interesting store. The sign basically says, if your life is really unfortunate, then your fortune reading will be free. Now, as a man of pure science, I failed chemistry. I have never had my fortune told before because I just don't believe in those. However, as a desperate person who's convinced that they're the main character. Of course I decided this would be the best place to ask for my love life. Basically, I chose my blood type and my age, then placed my palm inside the machine, and I couldn't fathom the results. Because I couldn't read them. They were all in traditional Chinese characters. Here's my mom translating them for me. Yeah, 
你好像 o p p r e s s 自己，你其实也很好胜，哎、啊，你赢啊，跟跟爱情有什么关系？他讲你不在 group 的时候，你不大会讲话，那你又不会讲花言巧语，我很会讲，不会絮叨啊。哦哦，你说你你的笨绝啊，你好像 stupid stupid 这样表现爱情哦，给人家一种哦，反而会给人家好感哦。你看，你看，你看，笨笨样啊。Then I tried the pinball machine. Since if I scored high enough, this soybean pudding store would give out free food. I ended up not even close. I blame the fortune telling machine for sucking out all of my fortune to tell it. 哎 Finally, we ended the day with a trip to another night market. I tried to play this balloon shooting game since once again my main character the Lulu was settling it, and I was convinced I would hit every single one. And you won't believe what actually happened, okay? I hit none of them. <laughs> Not a single one. This game is rigged. They let me choose a little trinket though, probably as a consolation prize because I looked so pathetic. I chose this chicken stress toy that shits out an egg. My grandpa was very mesmerized by it. Then we came across a Taiko no Tatsujin machine, which is that one drum game where you have to match the beat of the song. Now I just have to say. I have been working out, okay, but due to my body mass of a singular M and M, I still look like I came from an Adventure Time episode. You literally cannot see any signs of muscle unless I flex really hard. But playing this game, my God, I didn't even know I had muscle there. That's wild. It was fun the first two times, but then because I kept scoring well, it wouldn't let me stop. And by turn number four, I was close to death. Once again, my mom got distracted halfway through filming me in favor of this dog in a box with neon pink Crocs on. Very understandable. We arrived back to our Airbnb, had dinner, and then went to bed. Then came the next day. The beach episode featuring volcano. So this was the fit. I chose a sleeveless semi crop top alongside my only jacket. But since I have the cognitive awareness of a toddler, I had no idea we were going to the beach. Hence the completely unsuitable outfit. We first went to the Liberty Square, which was absolutely gorgeous, and the weather was very kind to us. <laughs> Then we arrived at this geo park, famously known for its geological formation. I had to Google what that meant. Of what looks like a queen's head. Now it was hot, mind you. I don't know what happened to the rain, but it just disappeared and made the air all humid. I felt like I was being boiled alive. Thankfully, I had this. Cooling spray, which I'm still trying to convince my mom is a great purchase. All you do is you spray it on yourself, and you immediately feel cool. Ah, ah! Oh my god, it's so spicy! Now navigating this part was a bit of a challenge because I had on really tall shoes. My mom seemed to have fun with it though, because she kept wanting to film me leaping across stones in hopes that I would just trip and fall, and she could catch it on camera. <laughs> the view was so nice, though it was worth all those near broken ankles and fighting off these demonic-looking water cockroach things. In fact, I enjoyed the scene so much that my hair tried to become one of the waves. Oh, also fun fact: I got really sunburned from this. You can't really see it, but just look at this tan line. I look like I'm permanently wearing that crop top now. That's a life hack if you don't want to keep buying new clothes. For lunch, we had seafood, which was probably one of the best meals I've ever had. Guys, isn't this dead crab just super aesthetic? I'm actually very allergic to crab. It makes my throat and lips swell. But I think a slight chance of asphyxiation is worth it. And then, of course, it started raining again. Our next location, it's a bit spooky. A bit chilly, if you will. We drove all the way up to a mountain where the fog was so heavy that you could barely see in front of you. Lost my grandma. We found my grandma. My body was doing a great job at handling this weather change, though.
there was this really long bridge that seemed to lead to nowhere. And of course it started raining again. Maybe I can be delusional and convince myself that this is just Zeus trying to sneak a peek at me. But thanks to that, I now have what could possibly be the best footage I've ever taken. like a sample of pollution. <laughs> this looks like those videos that warn you of what happens to turtles when plastic is thrown into the ocean. After my mom was done fighting demons, we went a bit further down the mountain and arrived at the volcanic landform. Again, I had no idea we were stood right next to an inactive volcano because I have no idea what's going on constantly. So imagine my surprise when we stepped out of the vehicle and I smelled the distinct scent of sulfur. I don't have a fear of volcanoes, okay? I have a deep distrust of them. My parents kept telling me that the volcanoes were inactive, but like, did the volcano tell you that? What's up gang, coming to you live from a volcano. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Now I wanted to get out there pronto, but my mom seemed pretty happy breathing in toxic substances, so we stayed around. I won't lie though, it's pretty cool to see a from fumaro from fumarole. From 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 in person. Mm -hmm. Then I barely filmed anything afterwards because I got a huge migraine, either from the sulfur smell or, like I said, can't trust volcanoes these days. It probably put something in my drink. All I took a video of was this cat because I had priorities. The next morning, we were just gonna go out and try some nice food. It was the final day of our trip there, and I decided to wear this dress that we bought at the market a day before. We had some delicious herbal chicken soup. Yum yum. I miss the food in Taiwan so much. Afterwards, we got to try out some mango shaved ice. I had to arrive first with my grandparents since my parents took a different transport. So it was up to me. Someone with again, no spatial awareness at all. With my two grandparents in their 80s to figure out where the store is, line up, order and get a seat. Amidst this crowded area. While I was trying to figure out if we were lined up at the right place and not just behind some random wall of people, a guy came up and asked my grandpa some questions. The thing is, it was a white guy who was speaking fluent Chinese with my grandpa, so that threw him off a little bit. The guy asked if this was the correct space to line up on, and my grandpa, who does not know anything, just went, Huh? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Grandpa! I don't know if this is! Then for dinner, we had one of, again, the best meals. Basically, with this roasted duck thing, you get to DIY wrap it, and here's how. You get a sheet of bread, put some skin on it, put some meat, some veggies, some sauce, then you wrap it all up and consume. Sounds easy, right? Well, my wrap kept getting unsolicited criticism. Number the skin. Number the meat. Then <laughs> Here are some extra clips before we went back. Uh, I had my first ever ramune drink in Taiwan when I was 13. Ironic considering it's a Japanese drink. But it was a really nice memory, so I decided to get the exact same brand again six years later. On the flight back, it was really shaky because apparently there's a tornado. Damn, Zeus, chill. I honestly thought this was the end for us, but luckily it wasn't because I'm still here. After everything calmed down, I watched a soothing show to relax. It was Hell's Kitchen. Then before we knew it, five hours had passed and I was back in Malaysia again. We got back home only to find my mom's papaya tree dead on the ground. And here's me reuniting with my dog after about four months of not seeing her. <laughs> Look at her tripping over my thigh because she's too short. Haha, <laughs> can't relate. And that's it, I'm back home now. I've been doing nothing these past few weeks but sleeping and playing video games. Truly the ideal holiday. My degree starts in September, so wish me luck. University is starting, I can't wait to grow up and wither away in despair. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you all in the next one. Surprise punch!